Final Jeopardy category is tanks. Here is the clue. What was the best tank of World War II? 30 seconds, players. Good luck. We come to you, Germany. And you wrote down what is the Panther. That is correct. And you wagered. Bragging rights on history forums. Down to America. I have to feel that he came up with a correct response, did he? Yes, and the wager? Doing almost everything you can. Now to our leader, the Soviet Union. And the response was, what is the T-34? With a lot of question marks, which means, of course, that the Soviet Union had many, many doubts. <laughs> You're right. When people look at the merits of a tank, they usually base it on two factors. Statistics on paper, such as armor thickness and gun penetration, and how the tank performed. Basically, kill ratio and how many people died crewing the thing. As a result, the T-34 has gotten a fairly bad rap. Although being fairly innovative, but still fairly crude, when first produced in 1940, the only nice things people will say about this tank is mentioning its sloped armor design, which it wasn't the first to use, but it was the first tank produced on a large scale to use this feature, and its performance in 1941, where German tanks had problems dealing with them with the guns they currently had. The only issue with these performance claims is that T-34s were not the bulk of Soviet armored forces in 1941, and they were often poorly used in coordination with infantry, and were often overrun and destroyed by German infantry. After this, the tank is remembered as being a shell magnet for German tanks. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And although this has been a bit exaggerated, tank kill ratios were in the Germans' favor throughout the war. People also point out the breakdown frequency of the tank and its lack of ergonomics and crew comfort such as no hatch for the bow gunner, no turret basket, and no commander's override to traverse the turret. With all these things taken into consideration with a narrow outlook, it's easy to see why people will look down on the T-34 and Soviet tank design in general. And I can hear you typing now, Johnny, why are you just bashing this tank? What's your point? Well, my point is, these criticisms miss the point entirely. Yes, the tank is crude. Yes, its components were not made very well. And yes, I would not want to be in one, but all of this was done on purpose. Once the war broke out, the Russian High Command took a step back to size up the war they found themselves in. And that was a war of attrition. Where grinding down the enemy, not outmaneuvering the enemy, was the name of the game. And they set up their industry to do just that. At the beginning of the war, the Russians had a multitude of tank designs that they were producing, that they ended up whittling down to about three. The KV, the T-70, and the T-34, on which all AFVs would be built for the course of the war. Well, until you get to the IS series, but an IS-2 chassis is basically just a modified KV chassis. Now this was done to standardize and simplify production and parts manufacturing. Everything that could be done to change the design to reduce cost was done. And this was where you get many of the T-34's hallmark features, such as less than perfect welds and poor optics. These decisions came from a study to find out typically how long these things lasted once deployed, and it was found that the tank would last about six months in general, but then only about 14 hours once in combat. So those reliability problems mentioned before? Those were on purpose as well. Because if our tank is going to be dead in six months, why would you put any component in there that's going to last for seven months when the tank's already dead and useless to you? The result of this is that cost and time to make these tanks went through the floor, and the Russian tank factories cranked these things out at incredible speeds and in ridiculous numbers. So that although we remember T-34s like this, Another one. The Germans saw them like this. And they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming, and they don't stop. This very cold and calculated decision, although very crude on the surface, was an extremely good move by the Russians for what they knew they were up against. Because of all of this, though, people tend to criticize the actual design of the tank itself, which I believe is a misnomer. Sure, it was manufactured poorly, but the 76mm and later 85mm guns were good guns for their time, and the armor was pretty good too. In the 30s, when this tank was being designed, the Russian army was going through a modern period, so even then quantity outweighed quality, even though this would take on a whole new meaning once the war started. It had a lot of upgrade potential that was implemented later on, and it made its mark on influencing tank design. The Russian mindset was that those aspects along with numbers were going to win the war, and smaller things like welds, reliability, and crew comfort were much less important and simply not given much attention because in their minds those aren't the aspects that killed German tanks. The gun and the armor killed German tanks. So as long as it had that, it was fine, due to the fact that they were going to make a million of these things. I guess my main point in all of this is, was the T-34 the best tank of the war? I don't think so, and I'm very glad I was born in a time and place where I didn't have to crew one. But was the T-34 the best tank for the Russians at the time as a capable war-winning vehicle? Absolutely.
покончили мы счеты, с войной покончили мы счеты, с войной покончили мы счеты, бери шинель.